Every person has a story, but not everyone has a place to tell it. I've interviewed amazing people all over the planet. I want you to meet them. My name is Ellen Trebolta, and I'm the most interesting person that you've never heard of because I like it that way. Well, Ellen Trebolta. Yes. Welcome to the most interesting person you've never heard of podcast. <laughs> and I'm, I apologize immediately for the title because people do know who you are. Oh, I, I thought you were talking about yourself. <laughs> well, I am. I, no. <laughs> no. I'm very happy to be here. Well, it's really nice of you to be here. Thank um, you. And, uh, you know, we met, right, mm -hmm. on this, really during the basket, maybe before that, but when, you know, the 1998, movie, I think, I it, think was it was the basket. I think that it was, was the basket. It. And yeah. you played an incredible part there, the storekeeper, which we were just talking about, you and I on the way over here, the set that that was built. And, and, and you still sort of admire that. I, I, I was so impressed with the... Uh, the I's and the T's being crossed. Everything was so authentic. Um, and I appreciate that. And uh, was it Vince that did Vince DeFelice. And what was that title? Pro Production Master? designer. Production designer. Production set designer. Design, he yeah. was, I mean, everything was so real. And it was so beautiful. And, you know, we had such gorgeous weather when you think back about it. Oh, well, I, I think that about it a month. lot because it was, we filmed right during now. So this would have been the, that, it was during October. Was it? It was all, mm. a lot of it was during October. I think we wrapped just before Halloween. It sort of hmm. would have been September, October. And we didn't get a bad day, I don't think. No, it, was it was just be, out of that cold. Pool. Yeah, but out on that Palouse. Oh, wow. Man, the, wow. the, 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 only, the light. The only, the thing that I remember that kind of, ticked me off a little bit was that Kelly Quinette, oh, I love Kelly who Quinette. was, you know, 19, was playing my husband's wife, and I, <laughs> and I played the town hag. And I <laughs> That's never, right, Jack what, yeah, that was his wife, and I, and didn't I was, cast that. and I was the town hag. So, um, no, <laughs> oh, I'm hag. still, I'm very good friends with oh, Kelly. Kelly. Well, she married I, my nephew, Jonathan. Oh my gosh, you know? I didn't know that. Yeah. She did. I, yes. They she met. She's one of my favorite people. Um, oh, she's a wonder and a wonderful teacher, and she does. She's oh, a my fabulous woman. I've had woman. a crush on her since the minute I met her. I bet. She's. I mean, who hasn't? Who yeah. doesn't? No, she's gorgeous and she's <laughs> lovely and she's she's a wonderful. Oh my person. gosh! I just yeah. I'm so glad you brought her up because I yeah. haven't thought of Kelly in a long time. That's so. Yeah, well, now she's related to me. That's so she's cool. And, and family's a big part of of both of our lives. You and I talked about this a little bit before because. Um, you know, I, I was even looking at your IMDb back, you know, and Joey, John, uh, Molly, you know. Margaret, Annie. Margaret, you, Annie. You don't, they're all, they were all involved in voiceover in Chicago and Broadway and uh, films. Right. Um, the, the thing that's, well, fortunate or unfortunate about this, about this field is if you haven't done a series or you're not a movie star, it's hard for people to know the recognizability comes out of seeing you every week or on. Um, right. So it's a three-picture deal or a series. Right, right. That kicks you off, mm -hmm. you know. Right. And they've done a plethora of work, but Joey, Johnny, and I have been in things that have been more visible. Right, right. Well, and that's that's exactly right. This is a bit. I mean, I stay busy all the time, and but I'm not. You know, I don't. I don't. I'm not in that world the way you guys were. And it's. I mean. My kids work with me, mm -hmm. and I and they have they literally grew up on the set. I mean, Nick, we were just talking about. He's right. twenty seven now, and right. he was on the set watching you perform at the basket how many years ago? When he was it was twenty five years now, I think. Yeah. And and there is something about the ability for he and my daughter Emma both just to understand this business in a way that nobody else can. It's sort of can you talk about that? I think there's a that it's that that's a real thing that you you're you're instantly comfortable i can't explain well, it but I, it's I, easier for them I, I think that and i'm probably gonna get a lot of criticism of that but anymore when you go to carnegie mellon and you're paying two hundred thousand dollars and you come out and you're in debt right and you haven't had any really on set or on stage experience right and so many kids can't afford to do summer stock right i was one of them 
you know, my, we were six of us that couldn't afford right. for me to go do summer right. stock. So I was fortunate enough to get some early, um, I went to Carnegie Mellon, actually. Was, huh. Of course, then it was 25 cents, not like it is today. <laughs> but back in the dark ages, in the olden days, um, I, I got to uh, be uh, in, in plays. Uh, and I lived in New Jersey, outside of New York. And I kind of cut my teeth on that. Where are you, what exit? Englewood, New Jersey, <laughs> right across the George Washington okay. Bridge. Okay, so not far. And actually, I'm going to tell you something sort of interesting. Robert Ludlum, the writer, yes. was the owner of the small theater, Fort Lee, right across the bridge from the George Washington Bridge, right up on a hill. Really? And my mom knew him, and I auditioned for him. And my first show was The World of Shalom Aleichem. And I played in Bonschwager. And they were David Rounds, these wonderful actors from New York. I was a kid. Right. You know, I was 19 years old. Right. I learned so much from them. And anybody who can apprentice. And now, you know, a lot of people would rather pay their apprentices in the film business than come from a film school with bad ideas and bad habits. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot to be said. For hands on, yeah, and oh, that's kind of how I grew up. And we, you know, in this business, just yeah. making stuff and yeah. trusting my gut and telling right. stories, and then you just get better at it. And you know, and now see, your my kids and John's kids and Margaret's kids did grow up that way. We didn't. You didn't exactly but right. They they were just there. Right. You know, that was where they went after school. Right, right, right. And and you did get some some pretty early thing. You were just talking about. I went, one of the questions I was going to ask you is who who is the old Hollywood person that you remember the most that had the most impact on you and and I'm, I, I, you may not uh, well actually it was broadway i was a broadway baby okay uh i i was the oldest of the six kids so uh, right. i got to go to broadway before there were so many other children and not as much money right you know they would take me and a big night was to go take the bus at the corner and go across the bridge wow. downtown broadway wow and ethel merman was my hero Oh my gosh. Without a doubt. We loved her. We just thought she was magnificent, fabulous. Bigger than life. And on screen, Betty, Ga Betty Grable and Roy Rogers was my only really hero that I ever Is that a right? fan. Yeah. Wow. So I was really more of a theater, which was odd for a kid of seven, eight years old. You know, rather than we didn't have any television then. Right. So I mean, I was born in the dark ages. Radio. radio. I remember no radio. Radio was Huge. you listened to it and it and it became so right alive. Wow. Um, I do have a very cute story about Ethel Merman and uh, my my mother and father, my family. <laughs> so we had loved Ethel Merman when she was the end, and so come I'm 20 years old, and they cast me in the end of the Broadway. And the road show of Gypsy starring Ethel Merman. Wow. So this is going to show you the kind of mother and father that we grew up with. So there's five, six kids. They put the kids on the train. They come to Boston to see Gypsy. Now, in this production I just started, I have ten crossovers. No words. So you're just walking on Walked stage. Walked across, walk back and forth. Some costume changes. I may have made a few motions, but I was understudying. I came in and swing. I did all that. So my mother and father, they come to the show. They see the show. I, they come backstage. I said, Mom, what do you think? She said, they couldn't take their eyes off of you. Oh. <laughs> oh. You were so amazing. You absolutely, you stole. I said, how about Merman? She was fine. <laughs> you... <laughs> Whatever. After, I mean, that's oh. my mom. Merman was okay, but not as good so as that the 10 bu walk that building you up and yeah. believing in you, and that's, that's worth a million bucks. It right is there. worth it. There's nothing like that sort of. The only problem is you expect it. Yes. So, you know, a lot of people can really, they have themselves in tow, and if people don't like their show or they don't give them good response, they're okay. Not so much for me. There's because I've heard I know people are motivated in different ways. There's some people. Oh yeah, cheers. Oh, oh oh, let's do that. Let's we do, do have. I only came oh, for the whiskey. She kids. only came for the whiskey. <laughs> it's, it's true. This you know. Okay. And, okay, I want you to do the. This is the Amador taste test okay. with Ellen Travolta. Tell All me right. what you think. Oh my, 
right? Right. That's fabulous. Don't you think they mm. should sponsor this podcast? You know, if you were smart, Amador, <laughs> you'd, you'd make a move now before this, it's, this, this thing, thing blows, up. blows up and you won't be even well, asked. I, I do want to toast. Uh, do you want, you, you're one of the first people to hear this. I told you I had a little surprise yes, in the car. Yes, please tell and me. And I didn't want to tell you until we were really live and it was we're live but, but here at this moment. We found out last week that this podcast, the most interesting person you've never heard of podcast, is a Signal Award winner for one of the best podcasts in America this year. Wow. And we are in the company of uh, Oprah Winfrey, John Stewart, um, Michelle Obama, Conan O'Brien, uh, and in our category that we won um, a gold with is shared. There's like three, I think, that won the gold for that. There's about uh-huh. two thousand podcasts that were considered, and we're one of the top fifty, I think. Well, congratulations! Um, thank you. And uh, Kevin, um, Kevin Hart. Yes, I know Kevin <laughs> has Hart. an amazing podcast. Yes, he does. Uh, and it's. And so his podcast and ours that you're on right now are both in the we we won for best interview talk show. Wow! So well, that's wonderful. You are the first guest Congrats. since I'll we drink to that since we are I'll drink to that and then the I'll 2023 put it Signal Award winner. Well, we got the gold. I I think it's wonderful. Congratulations! Thank you. It's it's pretty neat. We're we're sort of surprised by it, and you know it's kind of cool to to find that out that this is. This is good, and it holds mm-hmm. up, you know? So one of the things you and I talked about, too, was your our relationship with our with our with your youngest brother and my oldest sister. Uh-huh. <laughs> because you and John are... 15 years apart. 15 years apart, and my sister Mary Kay and I are 14 years apart. Catholic families, six kids, eight kids. No matter where, where you are in the country, there's a similarity in yeah. those in that di- the dynamics of that yeah. world. And our parents were really, really like that too. And I was going to say, there's a lot of people that I know that are actors that have been successful, or artists, or storytellers of some kind that end up being motivated because they they were sort of didn't get that attention, mm-hmm. you know, in a, in a way that this that sort of drove them to get that. I think a lot of stand-up comedians probably work in that way. But I, I never got that. We, My dad was an architect, and my mom was a singer and mu- dancer, and they had a band. They met in a band in the 40s. She was an accordion player and a piano, amazing piano player. My dad was a sax and clarinet player. And they just, this was, that was part of our life was seeing them play music every weekend and mm-hmm. being around, setting up the show, you know, helping them, carrying gear, you know, just doing all that stuff, right, that I think is... Is a, is part of it's no different than you know the the stuff you have to do to get pre- prepared on Broadway for a show. I mean, that just was always part of what we did, and they were always really supportive, almost too much, I think, sometimes what? of what we do. But but I I much rather have it this way than than I, seeking the attention. You well, know? the hard thing, and and that's interesting you say that because by the time when when we were all growing up, my mother had great energy for. Uh, headshots, modeling in New York, taking right. it, especially me. By the time Johnny came along, she would had him at 42 or 43 years old. She was a little tired. He wanted, I want the pictures. I want to do it. He really Pushed. initiated it for himself way more. But he than got to watch. Rest. He did. He watched it and all. And I got and, to watch. Yeah. Got to see and, all those older brothers and sisters might screw up. <laughs> well, yeah. or pull the best from, or the you know what I mean. Well, I think that I think that is what's the good stuff. True, he got a lot of good stuff, and because my grandmother passed away when I was twelve, and he was born when I was thirteen, whatever the fifteen year difference, I kind of took over for my grandma. So I really helped raise John. We were very uh, my, very my close. oldest siblings helped raise me too. Yeah. I and, totally and so understand. and they were and all of them were so wonderfully talented and so different oh yeah but my i was the first one that actually made a living my mother who loved the theater but had no real not a reality on being paid or anything because i remember telling my my friend cedric was going to be a doctor she said well that's fine but it's not as good as being an actor (laughs) and i thought she's right I (laughs) i didn't know any different so I was the first person, and I started it, and then they all saw, wow, you can do this, and you can get paid. This is possible. Yeah, it's possible. You and created that's the possibility. Yeah, absolutely, and that's yeah. what. So t- 
time goes on and I'm in it and I'm, uh, I did very well in New York and on the road and then I got married, had babies and I, I kind of dropped out. I'd go back if someone asked for me. I did a few things like I did bus stop on the road. Um, so and before mostly that, this is Broadway or, or touring. No, this is, well, when road. you're in a Broadway or a road show and you know the show, they'd hire me to, to be in Gypsy. I played um, Mazeppa, the stripper. That's what I ended up doing, wow. and Miss Cratchit. So I would stage the strip number because I was in it for a year and a half with Merman. I knew everything. Right. So they'd hire me, and I would I could stage things. I could be in it. So I would do that. I'd get a call and say, come on, do this, do that. But I didn't pursue it. Right, you, you waited for the phone call, and you were lucky to get it. Them. Yeah, well, my agent was very, and, and I had, had done agent. a lot of work. Right. But I was busy. I, I, I just thought, I mean, my... I thought I, I should be home with my kids. Mm-hmm. It didn't occur to me until later that you really, you can do both. Right. But at that point, I stayed home. A so different, in the, that was a different era, too, yeah. now. A very different era. So and I did a lot of shows. I did them in New York on the road. So Johnny starts out. So I have a family, and John would call me. So I had an audition today, and someone said, are you related to Ellen Travolta? And he would say <laughs> yes. So fast forward some years later. Um, not very much later, maybe five years, I was at the opening of Grease when he did it in Los Angeles. He was in the Broadway show first. Right, exactly. He played Duty. Okay. He didn't play the leads. He, he played didn't Duty. Play, he didn't uh-uh. play the leads. So I'm going to see it in L.A., L.A., and I see this very familiar young woman walking, and I thought, oh, my God. <laughs> she was my dresser when I did Carnival. <sighs> I went up, I said, Maxine... And I thought, she's still doing dressing. What are you? I said, what are you doing here? She said, I'm the producer. Maxine Fox, she produced wow. Grease. And she had been my dresser. Wow. So things, I mean, you know, talk Small about, community, talk really. about giving, you know, getting a cup of coffee and then they're your boss. Uh, and that was one of many when he was in Cotter. He said, Ma, uh, Ellen, do you know Jer- uh, uh, the Renaus? I said, well, yeah, they were on the road with me. He said, well, you know, they're looking for a mother for Horshack, and they want to know if you're still interested. And at that time, I had just gotten separated from my husband. I, was, I had the kids on my own. I was going into, back into the television business. Right. I came, I had an agent, and he was on both coasts, and I knew that theater was too, it just took too much of my kids, time. Not single mom. That's you tough, couldn't yeah. do it. So anyway, Jerry and Jewel were now. Brought me in, and I that I tested, and that's what I did, and that pretty much kicked off a, a lot great, of my television. That is one of the great sitcoms. It was great it fun. It was really well done. Yeah. And I, it was one of my favorites as a kid. I just yeah. thought that was incredible. And, of course, John was, you know, he's still, I mean, that put him on the map, that show. Absolutely. I mean, he, Absolutely. So, so Cotter happened before Grease, No, the Grease movie? happened, yes. But before Grease, Grease the movie. But Grease, he was in Grease the Broadway and Roadshow. The, the Broadway, the road show, and then he did a pilot, Welcome Back, Cotter, and then did that. No, no, wait a minute, hold on. No, yes, yes, he quit the show, did the did Welcome Back, Cotter, Cotter. and they picked him up from that to do the lead. The three picture deal was Grease, um, Saturday Night Fever, Grease, yes, and um, Saturday Night Fever was first. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. first, and the third one was the one with Lily Tomlin. Oh yeah, it didn't do as well as the other two, uh, mm. but that was his big thing. Wow, and he just, what was it like to see that star explode? Because, and that must be hard, Un- but also awesome. No. I- <laughs> I never yeah. saw it hard. Now, I'll say this. It depends on where you I are. I mean, from the, your point of view no, watching that. I'm talking from my point of yes. view. I was the oldest. He was my baby. Right. How the Still younger is, boys probably. felt <laughs> yeah. about his success. Had it been my youngest sister, I don't know. But all I knew was that I was amazed, so proud of him. Oh, my God. I thought he was the... I said, how did you... When did that all happen? 
because you know, he was you? a little nerdy. And I said, geez, you're cool, man. It's like Joey. Joey's always cool. Joey is cool. Joey is cool. Joey, Joey is, is cool. Barbarino. Joey, Joey was all this character, you know. He is Barbarino. Yeah, so. Joey. Yeah, Joey. Joey. Joey's so anyway, awesome. uh, I, I was, I was, I think that. Um, and that's Joey Travolta, your brother. Yeah. He was in the basket with us as well. Right. So yes, he was. Fan, I love and Joey. he's, he's, he's a wonderful, so he's a wonderful person. Mm-hmm. And so I think, I think there is definitely effect an effect on a family when you have a star of that magnitude. Oh my God. It changes yeah. people. It doesn't change you. Sure. It changes how people look Perceive at you. Perceive you guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. And how they, what they think and everything. Yeah, but stuff gets... Stuck. I was just, wow, I thought it was the greatest thing in the world. I, I, I heard somebody talk about him. The One of the most interesting things I heard was um, making a reference to him and Meryl Streep in that these are people that really be, are almost chameleon-like. They become that person. And I don't know if that's all of you that have that ability, but there is something about that gift, right? That you Absolutely. can just become that person to a point. I mean, they were, uh, uh, Meryl Streep's in Only Murders in the Building. They, I saw a thing on her recently about that. And she, the Steve Martin and, and Martin Chart were talking about her being on there. And all of them being, her being so comfortable that they didn't realize that she would say something and it was an actual, it was actually the line. (laughs) They'd be like, oh, okay. And then she's like, no, we're going now. You know, like it was so almost surreal because she would just morph into that thing Mm -hmm. yet be so present that you're not even aware that she's acting. Yes. I I think that I think think he's got that. uh, And you probably do too. Not not as much as he does. He's interesting. He'll watch something he'll pick up a little thing one day i noticed yeah. that he was um he was uh, um, uh s- sniffing and wiggling his nose i said what's going on he said I, you know i'm there was this really smart person and they were kind of you know, doing with the with the nose He's he said observing. i thought well, if i do that maybe it'll help me get my character of being the smart he'll pick up things and blinking he someone was blinking yeah and that was and it was the beginning of him getting that character he's amazing Yes, that's what He's I mean. Amazing. His observation of the human condition and people and mannerisms and that is remarkable. Yeah. I know that's that's what I'm kind of talking about. I think that he, <clears throat> he, I here's the difference. He is a blotter. I'm sort of a commentator. When I imitate someone, I'll put a little spin of my own on it. When he does it, it's purely. That person. Or he's taken it, yeah. Just he's, he's taken it to taken it over. pure. Yes. Just pure. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. he's a wonderful mimic. Yeah. And my sister Margaret is too. She's really fabulous. Yeah. And you know what? Molly. Yeah. My daughter Molly's yes. a great mimic. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know? I see and that. I'm mine is a little it's comment. Different, it's, a it's a little Ellen in there. It's a different kind of timing. Yeah, yeah. You put your own little <laughs> yeah. in everything you do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit Ellen. So how, yeah. how what was the relationship with you and him like? How's that different? And what how how cool has that been for you? Over the years? Yeah, oh, or even now. You know, you know what? Just, I mean, the... It's still, you're still close. Still, oh, extremely. And when he comes to see me in a show, the, to to him, and if he was sitting, I am Broadway. I am the performer. Yeah. And as long as you move a certain way and doing certain thing, and it's he's absolutely taken, you know, with with, well, with things that I do. I, I kind of, I kind of, of am. course we, you are. We get talking about theater and shows. Although he should go back and do a Broadway he show. He should do a. He, he should do a million he, of them. He really he is should. Phenomenal. I saw him on T-Mobile ad or something. I was just like, dude, that guy still got the moves. Oh, he's still he, cool. He's, yeah. he's still cool. But he don't want to do eight shows a week. Oh gosh. And you no know kidding. he and he get, loves um, to airplanes. Yeah, and he right. Loves to fly. By the so. way, do you feel safe riding with your brother? Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> I don't want to. Don't. I hope this doesn't go national. Be. I don't want to drive with him in the car. But <laughs> wait in, a minute. In the plane. You, okay. Wait a minute. Plane. You don't want to drive with him in the car, but in the plane, he's better. He's. he's oh, probably, I feel so calm because he's I think on in. It. He's I think on he it. thinks. I think he thinks he's in a plane when he's driving. You know, he'll walk around and look at you oh. and just. <laughs> I mean, you're thinking, what? Dude, you can't just put it on autopilot. Oh, my. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. But you can't do that with the car. He's got no. a Tesla now. Is that the one that goes? It does. That's how, how little I know. So he, that, oh, that's, that's not as close as you him. can come that, to a plane. It's a close? Absolutely. <laughs> no wonder he's got Absolutely. one. Absolutely. But, wow. yeah, we were, we're very, 
very close. Oh, that's really cool. And we've been through a lot together. Yeah, I bet. I bet. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I just, Pulp Fiction's also one of my favorite movies. Mm-hmm. And just to watch that comeback, I just thought, oh, what a brilliant move, dude. Why? Like, I always think about, like, why isn't that person, you know, you, you're one of those people. But, but like, why didn't they just, what is it that they didn't make it? I think of, like, Mandy Patinkin, you know, or how is that guy not, won five Oscars or, you, you know, I just, there's, oh, but, they're so talented. But you, you have to, then you have to there, look at the Oscar. Some of this is just how it works, right? You have to look at that as PR. Oh yeah. No, you really, no, no, you really do. And, for sure. and, and I think, you know, of course it's an honor and it's a wonderful thing, but in order to be fair, five people would have. I don't even mean that. Have... I mean like almost household name in a way that, you know, that oh, like a lot of name, other main yes. actors yeah. have made it and nowhere near the talent of that guy. You know, that, that has kind nothing of thing. to do with that's that. <clears throat> that's appeal. That's who you bring in your home. Right. Now, who's the guy that did my left foot? Uh, oh, he, he's won Daniel four. Yeah. No one knows. No, it would not be a household name. No. Would not be but won five Academy Awards. I, he's a genius he's, actor. He's amazing. But not. As uh, big as Adam Sandler. No, exactly right. You know, Who was here they're, last you, night? They're not, yeah. and, and and also there's something about television. When you're yeah. on television, right. someone feels very comfortable going up to you in the grocery store and saying, "We're well, in their you living know, room." We, yeah, night. absolutely. And and so speaking of that, because the other family I always think about that I was I've always been really a, a, kind of a hero of mine is Gary Marshall, mm-hmm. and I've always just thought. I I get uh, he reminds me of me. I don't know. I've, I've got some kinship there with just sort of how his sensibilities are about stuff and the sort of way he's told stories and has his family around all the time. And you know, what he's, was it like he, to be around that guy? And and can you talk about that sort of experience with him? Because wasn't he part oh, of? Oh, he did. You know? I did three shows. I was going to say. Shows. He was, come on. Yeah, right. No, you'll do it. Come you'll on. love it. You'll be happy. We'll all be happy. He That's was great. His, par- his parents were fabulous. His sister, right. his daughter. The family. Still it's a family been, show, right? But all of his shows Penny. that he did, um, all the shows that, that he did uh, had a real warmth and family twist, too. They did, and he was the king of that. And his movies, you know, a Pretty Woman, phenomenal. One picture. of my favorite, phenomenal movies ever. picture. And he had a group of of uh, people, actors, and they were a never troop. major, but he always found a spot that made them shine. Yeah, they just weren't in it. They really brought it alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, and he yeah. was great at doing that. Yeah, um, his transition to movies I thought was impre- really yes, impressive because yes. you could get pigeonholed in that TV world big time, and he kind of transcended it. Well, I think Johnny changed a lot of that, and mm-hmm. so did Tom Hanks. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Uh, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. Go we're ahead. talking about directors. I was thinking about actors, but you were kind of too. Yeah, it kind of was. Gary he, Marshall, he, but those uh, kinds of shows, they all made it in TV. Yeah, they were right. all TV people, but now that has no credence anymore. anymore. I mean, especially if it doesn't world. make any... No. It hasn't made a really big difference. Well, especially since streaming now, it's just everything's... Well, that's true, no work, and right. the pandemic, yeah, well, right and, now, and all of that. And all well, of yeah, but, but I think they're in reality... Um, I think that the things that are done, some of the things on Netflix are far superior than the things that are being brought into the theater. hundred percent. So you, people want to do good work. Yeah. And, and people will find good content. And they now will. there's so many opportunities for that. It's fantastic. Look at OJ, the OJ Simpson thing. Oh. Johnny did that. That was television. Yeah, it was television. Yeah. Right. So everybody goes back and, and Meryl Streep. All right. And she's doing TV. She's I mean, doing that's TV. TV who, that, who, it's Hulu, but whatever. Yeah. I think that if you're, a, and she's certainly not a person who's full of themselves at no. all. She wants to work. Right. She wants to do. She, she, she does it for around. the craft, and she does it yeah. because she's looking for interesting yeah, and, material. And that's yeah. In fact, Peter Coyote, who's in our our movie, and I'm like, why'd you take this? <laughs> you know, he goes, the script's good, and you paid me. And and I told my agent if I ever miss something because of money, though. If I do, if I ever, you ever don't show me something because because money didn't was in the way, and I find out, I'm gonna I'm gonna fire you, because I want to make sure it's good first, and that that's a really important thing. That's that, a, it's, that happens that, a lot. It does happen a lot. 
Yeah, and things go by people, and the agent makes a decision that really is the actor's decision. That's right. To make yeah, managers too. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And oh yeah, I know some kids who worked here in this place, and they were making it big and and uh, on YouTube and having all this stuff, and all they wanted to do was get in Saturday Night Live, and didn't get the opportunity because that was t- told no, we don't. They're not mm-hmm. going down that road without them even knowing about it. Yeah. And I mean that's just that's just a tough business. It's a tough business that you're in. And how, how have you transcended that, being able to just know, you know? Well, here, here's the bottom of the truth, is that um, I, did, I worked a lot on stage. I worked a lot in television, not as much in film. I've done films, but not as many. I really was very comfortable in television, especially the sitcom yeah. era. Uh, and I really, I really enjoyed that. And then when we retired up here, knocking this, it's okay. we I came it's up here in 94. I was doing a soap opera called General Hospital, and I'd commute back. I'd get that early. I've heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> I'd that early 7 o'clock or 6 o'clock plane go down, and we had a house at the time there, did it. And when we moved up here, we went back to what we started. We started to theater again. Yeah. If a movie came along, we'd do it. Um, and I did do a few pilots, and I did three years of of um, General Hospital. But as the time went, went along, you kind of started to find other avenues and didn't think about L.A. and didn't pursue L.A. anymore. Right, because it, it's different when you're up here. Well, it, and bit. there was nothing, and it was just at a time where there are periods of your life that there's not as much opportunity. Right. It just happens that yeah, way, yeah, you know? Yeah. So we kind of went along, and I watched people that had been Academy Award winners have two or three lines on something. Yeah. People that took, they, you know, they stayed in the game, and Jack and I decided that at that point in our lives, we'd had a good run. You so did. we kept up doing, you know, whatever, a movie here, a movie there. But a lot of theater, and so the the TV thing though you got you had a great run, mm-hmm. right? I so did. you were you were both on Charles in Charge, right? And no, Joe, I you? was no, I started Joe? on Cotter. Cotter, yeah, I yeah, did yeah, this yeah. Spin-up. No, no, I know you started. No, there. but then um, uh, Happy Days, Happy I was Days. on that for right. uh, a long time. Uh, Charles in Charge, Charles in Charge. But Jack did a guest appearance, but he wasn't on. He was Lou Grant. Oh yeah, no, Jack was Lou Grant. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, your husband Jack Bannon yeah. was on Lou Grant for right. yeah, a yeah, great for run. Years. He had a yeah. really good job yeah. on that. But but you were you were on Charles in Charge. Charles in Charge at For how all many years five. was that? Yeah. That was five. Wow. And the others were two, one, uh seven episodes, twelve. I did a lot of pilots that only went making it. But that was probably 13. the longest run then. Five years. Uh, a lot. Yeah, that was the longest run. You know, that, of a of a sitcom. Have, yeah, yeah. You and were, it was great. You were and, great in that. Thank you. You were great in that. Thank I you. loved that show. I did too. And yeah. I, and I and I have a great following um, from all those latchkey kids came they, home. Yes, and they still remember. Yeah. That. You, yeah, they, you were with them. You were yeah. their mom too. Yeah. You get that? I, they, I, oh gosh, yes. You know that? Absolutely. Okay, good. Oh yeah, absolutely. I hope you know that. <laughs> no, I do. I do. And That's, I and I, I always appreciate. Did you know it at the time, or do you know it now? You know when Scott Bayo came up here and we did a he did a one man show and I was um, I presented along with the resort and he did a wonderful man one man show and at the end of it he brought me up and we did the last half hour but in the opening it he said to the people that were there he said you know I I didn't realize until way later how much my fans cared about me and how much they knew about my life. Yeah. And he said, lately, since I've slowed down a little bit, I'll go and see, go to something and they'll ask me. He said, so really, I'm doing this show for you. I'm doing, I'm showing you the stuff that went on that you didn't know about. Right. And the stories you didn't know. Right. And then at the end, he did a question and answer. And we did three, sh- we did Happy Days, Joni Loves Chachi, and, right, Johnny Lost Touchy, yeah. Yeah, and uh, uh, Charles in Charge, those three. Right. We did. Right. And we talked about that and how we were... Um, That's what I was saying. You were, you and he were together. 17, 18 years. Yeah. How's that? How's he? He's wonderful. I always thought he was really... I mean, when he... He's adorable. He, when he hit, he was... Now, he had that same kind of pop, I mean, maybe not yeah. as big as John, but right well, up there, right? You he, watched uh, him, too. He was adorable. He was, oh, he was great. He was yeah. so, yeah. Yeah, he's sexy and funny and yeah. smart. And just, yeah. I mean, his early 
because I was a Happy Days kid. I mean, that's, mm-hmm. you know, I was, you know, that's why I think maybe I love Gary Marshall so much because the understand the understanding of like I understand what the 1950s are through Happy Days. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I don't know what the 50s were because I wasn't alive. Right. That's my lens into what the 50s were. Right. Which is not probably right on at all. <laughs> well, it's, it's pretty the right because it was, it was my time, and it is pretty accurate. Was it pretty accurate? Pretty accurate. Okay. I was going to say. Know, you had the you had the um, uh, the preppies. Yep. And then you had the um, the greasers. The greasers. Yeah. You know, and it was uh, it yeah. was he, not. He unlike, nailed it. I mean, he that was it. extreme, but yeah. it was not unlike that. And the purity. I mean, there really was. Nothing bad was going on at that time. Yeah, right. Yeah. It was not actually not very different from the '80s <laughs> when it well, came out. In a lot of ways, the in, mirror of that the, time. Yeah, yeah. Some of it. Yeah, but the '50s was the end of an era. It, I mean, it it switched the '60s anyway. That's yeah, a it whole switched. other other yes. thing. But yes, uh, and I think, but I think it was a great deal of accuracy. Well, and his he was a he was young. In that those early Happy Days shows. Oh, you are talking about Scott. Scott? Oh, in that I was think I went back to Greece again. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, and that's, Scott. Scott that's was fifties also. For Scott sure, yes. was. Um, he was really snarky. He was. He, was he tiny. stole it. He was he little, was tiny, and he was mouthy, and he was great. Yeah, remember Bugsy Malone? Yeah, he yeah. Was great. In Bugsy he was Malone. great in Bugsy Malone. Yeah, that was a great movie. That was a great movie. It was a great movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Who, who else was in that? Um, Oh my gosh! No, oh, now I'm gonna get in trouble. Judy, Ju, uh, Jody Foster. Jody Foster. Uh, Phenomenal. I can't. Yeah. And Jody Foster. I can't, one I I can't remember. think of the, the other. I, I saw that in the theater. I thought that was. It was a theater sh- a it, movie. It, it, yes, it was so wonderful. One of the things that we talk about a lot in here is just Spokane and the connections here, and a lot of people that are on have this, you know. And you've been here long enough that you almost qualify as somebody that's from Spokane, even though you're from Coeur d'Alene. It's the same thing, you know, in a lot of ways. Um, but I I talk a lot about. Uh, not a lot, but but my family, my son Nick, has a connection to Bing Crosby mm-hmm. because his great grandfather and Bing were best friends growing up, and his great grandfather was a phenomenal um, banjo player, and they were really close. and And um, his grandpa, Bing, would come home and and fly fish and or, you know fish and hunt with with his great grandpa all the time every summer, you know. And the the it's hard to, for people now to understand the impact that that Bing was on the world. <laughs> but as, as we get, as people get older, not, not many people remember him the way that somebody who grew up in the forties, fifties did. That's what, true. What was he, what was, how do you describe that experience of who Bing, Bing was? Bing Crosby. Bing Crosby on well, the radio, especially. First of all. The, um, the impact his- was Christmas, was White Christmas, which is still the biggest selling song ever, ever. in the history of music. Best, most, the highest selling played, record ever. sung yeah. Christmas Carol, and also all the movies he did. Right. He did a lot of movies, and that was, and we, we, those were 40s movies, and you saw them in the The 50s. road shows. Yeah, all of that. Yeah. White Christmas, yeah. all the ones he did with Danny. Danny Kaye. Danny Kaye. Bob and, Hope. And, yeah, Bob Hope. So I think of him in that way, and then I knew his boys. And I didn't know his daughter, um, so we, you know, we we passed because they were involved. Oh my gosh! In oh, Dragnet time, oh, those yeah, series yeah, yeah. with yeah, Jack yeah. Webb. Is that right? Yeah, uh, Bing Crosby's boys. So I okay. knew them kind of as oh, producers. You did. Yeah. But as a kid, what do you remember about him? That what I said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Movies and singing. But he was sort of the biggest star in the world, almost. Well, Sinatra was very big at our house because okay. he was Jersey boy. Yeah. And my mother adored him. Yes. So he was a big hero to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he is to me too. Yeah. I think he's, he was really. I think he, he was, was. But we have so many that come from there yeah whereas there may not be as many no super very rare like he yeah that, that well yeah and and to be kind of you know box office and and records at the yes. same time very yeah. rare i think yeah. pretty unique best advice you ever got from somebody about the business you've been in hmm well don't take it seriously was one <laughs> and um <laughs> you know don't uh uh he'll never kiss you back <laughs> so be careful what you pass on, you know, uh, when you uh, when you continue. Anybody you looked up to as a as a fellow actor, 
when oh, you were so, young. I know you mentioned Ethel Merman, you but, know who but who, I, who you kind of was like a mentor? I, I can't, I, I, you know, I don't think, I mean, I love so many. However, there is an English actress who I adore, and her name is right out of my head, but you're going to know her because she played opposite John at the President of the United States. She played the First Lady. Oh, okay. She's also... Um, Oh gosh, she's in so uh, Emma Thompson. Emma Thompson, one of the great people, one of the best people I ever met, and I only knew her for an afternoon. I flew down to Texas with uh, for Oprah. Johnny was doing Oprah. There was that big oh, meat cool. scandal thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> I wanted to be her best friend. I she she's just, just had adorable. something about her yeah. that was so incredibly wonderful. Really, and she was also a lovely actress. Oh, phenomenal. but I have a lot of people that I admire a lot. Um, and I love Barbara Stanwyck back in the day and watching her, you know, there's yeah. a lot of people that I, that I admire. Anybody you worked with that gave you, that you, you really were like, they're the, they gave you, you Scott Baio, I loved working with him. I love working with John. Yeah. Um, I what did you guys worked on? What did you work We did Grease. Okay. I'm in Grease. That's right. And what we Greece. also did, well, Cotter. Yeah. And then right. I did a movie with him and I played his sister with, uh, and it was filmed part of it here. Of the val- uh, they were the couple that went around and murdered everybody. The oh, yeah. sweetheart, the something sweethearts. I don't remember oh, yeah, the name yeah, of the yeah. movie. I, that and then I did a um, um, uh, bus stop with him. I acted with him, and I've done shows live with him. We've done like singing and dancing. So together. Connor was the first one that you guys did together, show TV show. Yes. What was that like for both of you to have well, your brother and sister? Ex- it was probably it, it, great. It was, it was exciting, but he wasn't in that episode. Oh, I he see. He was in, I mean, he wasn't, we were home. Were, oh, We gotcha. were home. He was, I, I didn't play in any scenes with him. Gotcha, right. You were, yeah, you, know, you were, so, you played the, you played yeah. the, you were just with, with uh, Horshack or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that, and all those kids. And you know who the the little girl was? I mean, my mind is really holding up You're well. doing really, really well doing here. Good. I know. We're the good. names and everything. Um, <laughs> the little girl who was the original Annie. On Broadway, it'll come back to me. She was the little girl in Cotter. Oh, really? And we didn't get picked up as a series. I went back on as a reoccurring. Okay. And she went to Broadway and was a big, big Broadway star in wow. Annie. And I saw her last year in Vegas. I hadn't seen her in what forty-five years? Wow. Something like that. Wow. She big Broadway person. Wow. Yeah. Something no, you've never told anybody about working on, like Charles in Charge, that that you thought was funny or interesting. Anything anything happened on those shows that? When I went to the first day, I ran into Jimmy Callahan. He played the grandpa. Do you remember Jimmy? Mm-hmm. And I had dated him when I was on the road in Gypsy. <laughs> so fancy meeting you here. <laughs> Hadn't seen him in I don't know how many years. Oh, uh, that's yeah, funny. that was. Wow. So why Coeur d'Alene? What made you pick that? You and uh, Jack? I mean, you were No, both? It, it was, we were doing an episode of Charles in Charge, and um, uh, Baldwin, Daniel Baldwin was our guest. They had just come back from putting his father's ashes on Lake Coeur d'Alene. Oh, was that right? So we, yeah, we, um, we huh. filmed on a Thursday, and he was telling us about Coeur d'Alene, and, and he said, in ja- I said, Jack, B, I said, let's go. I was on the lake house. So we had hiatus the next week, flew up, we're in Coeur d'Alene. We fell in love with it. Oh, and as we're walking amazing, down right? the park, this these two people come up and recognize us and said, this is 89. Yeah. And said, wow, what are you doing here? And we thought, I said, well, we're going to buy a house. We're going to live here. And they said, well, would you like to be in a play? And we looked at each other and said, well, I don't know. We, I was still doing um, Charles in Charge. Right. And I said, what are you doing? He said, company. He said, we're changing uh, from the Little Theater to NIC, and it's the Coeur d'Alene Summer Theater. Coeur Summer Theater. So Jack and I came back and opened in company in 1990. We were the first show. Just walking open. by. Walking by. And then, well, we kept in <laughs> touch with them. They made us, you know, they said, could you come up? But we said we would. Oh, for sure. But we ended but, up doing it. Wow. We, we We had the summers off, and that, and then we just fell in love, and we'd fly up, kept looking for houses, and being involved in things up so here and we I fell think, in love with it yeah because when i think of you and i think of when people think of in fact i my i was getting my hair cut a couple of days ago yesterday maybe and i was like oh alan travolta is gonna be on and, <laughs> and chris my barber is an awesome guy he's like it's like didn't you do quarterly summer theater you know like that was the me- that so you really are here connected to yeah. that as 
sort of top of mind for people. 23 years. Really? We did it. And then the phenomenal 20, the stuff. 20, that, yeah, it, it was, was great. Really well done. And then it went under, which that's there's a political mess that wow. went on. No one will ever know the bottom I'm of sure. it, but it was it should never have closed. Oh. Now it's back and it's good. It's got that summer stock thing. Did that was that it, sort that's, of sort of what you were harking back to a little bit? That uh, sort of you well, know, maybe, well, it is summer it stock, but it the is. only difference is the that. Um, it's not it close was, to New York. It was well, but it was it, it was a, a much bigger. You know, theater, and they did. When I think of summer stock, I think the East Coast, the barn. I got the costumes, you know, that oh, kind wow. of thing. But I love summer theater. I loved all my experiences there, and I love the resort, which I have been doing that show for ten, well, twelve. And speaking 12 of that, years. like you're, uh, you're, you know, you're. Can I say how old you are? Do yeah, you not of want course. Me to? I don't but care. I, if I were you, I'd be shouting from the top of the mountain. I would say, I, I. You are. People are not going to believe you're 84 years young, correct? Thank you. Well, I feel like it. You yeah. are, and you are busier than ever. I am, am older and I am busier. And I, <laughs> so I think, cool. I think I can tell you in, a, I, I, this last year has been, I've done two Hallmark movies. Of right. Going home. And now I'm going to go do um, General Hospital after 30 years. Pick up that storyline. That's and, amazing. And then come back and do um, the Christmas show. But the thing that's interesting about it, I think I started to say this to you, the week of Thanksgiving, my second movie is going to air. I'll be on General Hospital and we'll open the Christmas show. Wow. You are everywhere. I am. You are everywhere. Am. And you're doing this podcast. Well, I am honored for <laughs> and you to ask me. you're on one of the me. best podcasts of 2023, apparently. Uh, well, that you've told me that. And if you say that and you got that award, I think it's wonderful. Uh, they're shipping it to us today. I think and, it's uh, fabulous. It's very surprising and really cool. Why? But, well, well but, I don't know. I mean, but the thing not, is, you, we're just doing this because I, just, you're, I you're, get to catch up with people and I miss well, people. Well, this is, you know, but you're, you've got a lot of people that you mentioned that are very interesting. They're very varied. It's not just show business. It's not well, just I have the this, arts. So what I appreciate about you a lot and why I wanted you, one, I think one of the biggest reasons I wanted you to be on here is because because you are so authentically you. You have been ever, every time I've met you. You're not anything that you're not. And I think that's probably runs in your family. It's what is the secret sauce to somebody like John making it. Is that you're really, you're, you're, you're as authentic right now as when we were in the car. And <laughs> anytime I see you, you're not any different than that. And one of the reasons that I wanted to do this podcast is because I felt like the people that I've had the chance to meet in my career all over the world, literally I've filmed in China, I've filmed in Europe, I've filmed everywhere. And I've had the chance to sit people down and interview them. I'm never on camera. Mm -hmm. I'm behind hearing their story and I, it's my job to get them comfortable so they share it. And, you know, if it takes whiskey, I'll do it. But, but what I noticed throughout all of that is I have talked to some famous people too that people know but the most interesting people have been the ones that nobody knows because everybody's interesting and and some are more than others maybe but but i i i think if if it's somebody that's been interviewed a lot and they're a famous person they're way less likely to tell me anything that that they really want they're less, they're not going to tell anybody anything really because they're so guarded with their life, you know, and they've been burned and they're afraid to talk. And, you know, it's, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's or, their job to not really. Well, in or some maybe ways. they can't tell their or story. Or they can't tell and their someone story. someone has Correct. to sit down and write it. That's exactly right. But I think you're absolutely right. You play the circuit long. You get, you, you get tired of it, right? You find who you trust and who you e don't trust. E oh, I'm and sure. And I know this from John and I'm not going to mention anyone's uh, name. Yes. There's certain people he's afraid of. Oh. He doesn't. He, because uh, when I would you're be, be, more than a few, he, here's the thing that's interesting God. about the about an actor. You're talking about my life, not my invention, not my book. Right. My life. That's right. My family. That's my right. children. That's right. So why would I, right, want to tell you in intimacy? Exactly. It doesn't any, make any it sense. It doesn't make any sense. Right. I know. I can tell you good stories that will not be hurtful. Right. Correct. But, but, you know, to really hear that, and I've had the chance to have some amazing people on here who 
you really share, you know, and they yeah. really tell their life and it's inspiring and it's, it's been and really I, moving but, and you're one of those people. I well, mean, you really you. are. I, 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 I've had some attorneys on that. I've just been like, they're not going to tell me anything. They're an attorney. They're going to be too careful. You know what I mean? <laughs> I probably wouldn't either, but there's just, I don't know. Anyway, I appreciate that about you, that you're willing to do this and that you were, well, you're fun. just, you don't change whether the camera's on or not. And that's yeah, not I guess always I, the I, case. Yeah. And I guess you've I don't, that. you know, I always think I do. I really don't. But I'm you've just... seen enough people that you've worked with who do change. Yeah. Yeah. And, and probably not still working at 84. Well, because the good people keep working well, because they're good people. Well, I think, I hope that, that, that is true. But I, I think a lot of people aren't able to work or they don't For have sure. the opportunity or, yeah. Maybe they're not interested anymore. A lot of people don't care about it. It's hard. Dennis Franz, who's a very dear friend of mine, oh, yeah, doesn't want to really? act. So he good. gets more offers than he's anybody. He's so good. He's so good. He said, I did it. I'm done. I don't have that I thing. That. He just, I'm done. He plays golf. He plays with his grandchildren. He's, he's a happy. wonder. He loves his wife. They travel the world. He doesn't get the kick out of it. Right. I love it because when I do a Hallmark, first of all, there are all these young people. And they're wonderful, and they're inclusive. Right. And they ask me a lot of questions, which I think is commendable. Very cool because generation right now, right? Most people, I, most yeah. older people, get put aside. Oh yeah. Their their uh, their opinion isn't as important. Right. Where these kids are wonderful, and I know it'll be the same on General Hospital. Rena Sofer's been a friend for years. She's fabulous. How'd you get so, the Hallmark movies? Because that's really cool. Those are they're they're good. They're great. Well. Is that too long a story? No, to it's just short. It's short. Here's the thing. I'll tell you very quickly. When Jack passed away, there was a cat outside, and he was a feral cat, and I don't care for cats that much. It, sorry, Jack. And <laughs> anyway, the cat had never been in the house. Jack passed away. He came to the door, the cat, and he looked at me, and I brought him in. And he sat on the couch, and we watched Hallmark for two months, solid. Aww. And then no he never stayed overnight. He went back out, and then he disappeared. I wanted to do a Hallmark. I said, I called my agent. I said, can I, I just want to do a Hallmark, just one. Can I just say two words? But we all get back to you. We'll see what we can do. Nobody seemed to know anything. I'm on vacation. I'm talking to Johnny. I said, I want to do a Hallmark. And that had just after Kelly had passed, and we were spending a lot of time together. And he said, so yeah. your bucket list. I said, I want to do a Hallmark. I'll be in a candy store. I'll just say one word. He called his agent in New York. He said, what do we have to do to get Ellen? Yeah, come on. To get, to, what is this? John freaking So Randy, Randy Michelle called Hallmark. They said, so they interviewed me. They knew, they pulled my stuff from my history. Oh, cool. We Look did a you. streaming thing in 21. And they said, and they wanted to see what I look like and everything. And yeah. they said, oh, Ellen, absolutely. You'll do one first quarter. Or this was maybe 20. It first quarter. No way. It took till 20. The, anyway, it was a year and a half before the, with the pandemic and everything yeah. until I could go anywhere and work. So I did. I was so excited. They finally called. And it was a very sweet part. And I really liked it. And I get a call one day. And this man says, hi, my name is McLean Nelson. I'm your director. I've been a fan of yours since I was six years oh. old. And he said, I want you to do more in my movie. I'm going to give you lots of bits. And he did. Wow. He just filled the part. And then when we then then they asked me to do another one, the sequel, because it works so well, and the group is so good together. So it all comes back around to you, you know. Well, and uh, the other thing about you, you seem exactly like when we worked together twenty five years ago. Like really, like you know, I've had. I mean, I know a lot of people, and we all get older, and it isn't just the look; it's the energy level. Or the, you know what I mean? You you are no different. When I talk to you on the phone, I'm like. She sounds exactly the same. <laughs> you know, you know, I talk to somebody 25 years later, they sound a little lower. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like, yeah. uh -uh. you're just like, they're all, like, that's incredible. What is it? Well, I don't know. I think, I, I don't know. My, I, I'm, I, I don't know. I just, don't that's ask. just the way that I am, I guess. Your energy's I, always you know, been kind of. I'm just me. <laughs> well, you're absolutely delightful. Thank Are you. Are you, uh, anything you regret? Missed? Wish you wouldn't have done. Wish you would have done. You know, I, I'm i really sorry that I ever got... To, I'm sorry about my divorce. I'm not sorry that I didn't end up with that person. 
But that was a disappointment to me. Yeah. That I didn't stay married to the same person. Yeah. And it really was his idea, but that that hurt me very deeply. Mm. And I, I was I was disappointed in that. Divorce. Is Although Jack was the love of my life, had I, but divorce is not. I don't like and being raised Catholic. Yeah. Oh, I know. Not a good idea. No, I know. But that era, man, it's, oh, I know, that's sisters that went through, yeah, it's just, it's, yeah. it was a different time, yeah. and yeah. yeah, not, not cool. No, and I don't, What's your I, dad do? My dad, Travolta Tire Exchange, he was no tires, way. recap and vulcanize. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember, and then they had this green, vulcanize. green, green plastic that was on the rubber, we used to make costumes out of it and do shows. <laughs> we take it, cut it, it was stiff. Was he was as green. positive as your mom about all that? She, he was very quiet about it, but such he was the one that really took a big interest. He would cue me. Um, he he, Did he loved have some the talent? idea. He loved the. He was not. He was an athlete. Okay. My mother was a lovely actress and okay. very beautiful. Yeah. But he he took an interest in all of us and and was and really loved it and or enjoyed you, it. You must have been if you were on. I mean, John is like one of the greatest dancers of maybe all time in cinema, right? And I taught him everything. I was going to say, you must have had that. You got a, you got the athlete from your we dad a little bit, kind I suppose. Of, if you put us all up on a stage, we all move the same way. So, it's interesting. It's interesting. But, but Johnny, and there again, what a chameleon. He'll do like a regular dance. And then if he sees somebody do something outrageous, he can, do he it. can duplicate it. Exactly what I'm talking about. That's the thing about he can him. He see something and do it. Yeah. That's a rare thing. Yeah, his dancing in Saturday Night Fever was... Phenomenal. 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 And, and the fact that he can act, it's like, that's really rare. Still kind of blows me away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what was it like when Bolt, Pulp Fiction worked and he got back? I mean, in 94 and that, that was an interesting right? period Because with he had him. really been off the... Well, I, not, I mean, he not was at as, such a high level. Not as well. What happened was after up Urban Cowboy, mm -hmm. there was a dip, and then he did Look Who's Talking. Oh yeah, and huge. then Pulp Fiction. But there was between eighty six, was a break, or eighty seven, and or maybe eighty eight, eighty nine, and ninety four is yeah, when Pulp six Fiction. Years. Yeah, five or six years. He was still working, but the movies weren't they big didn't hits. Click, yeah, no. Then he had Phenomenon and all oh, yeah, those yeah, yeah, other yeah. great no, movies he's been, he's after continued, that. Yeah. But, but he what, never, he's how, a big, they cool call him you, the though? comeback kid. Oh, yeah, he was the comeback kid. Yeah. That's the movie's incredible. You know, um, I, the only thing, he's very interesting about what he does. I mean, he is a, certainly successful and wealthy. The minute he would sense that things were not, he'd cut things out. He just would not do this or not do that or figure this way maybe he'd sell a couple of his houses and then when he got reestablished after 94 then it grew 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 yeah, it meant okay. so many other things yeah. uh, that then it was it stayed right he'd have better years than others yeah. but basically the career yeah. kept going and yeah. going how was he lost his wife right mm -hmm. what how was kelly and what was that like and that must have been hard huh very and yeah. very surprising For you. very well I knew about it, yeah, and um, the other, the other, the re the rest of the kids didn't know. Oh, um, and no, uh, she told me, yeah, and I was down there, and she told me, and she, but she was so beautifully optimistic that she was a you, hell of an you, actress. You, yes, she was. Holy you cow. really thought it was going to be over. It's going to be fine, and then when we saw her at Christmas, and mm. She had a wig on, and we were. That's when they all found out. My Can I ask what sister. kind of cancer it was? Do you, you know? You know, um, it my wife metastasi has cancer, it so metastasized, yeah. I believe, into the brain. Okay. But it started breast. Yeah, and that's what my wife is dealing yeah, with right it's, now. Um, but hers was she's having, very. She's quick. having a good. Yeah. Run right now, so and I'm really grateful she, for but that. She was that's kind of why I asked. Her. But here's it, and I don't know if this has anything to do with anything. But she had a baby at 48 years old. Hmm. I wonder, Kelly. That's wow. That's a lot. That's 48. That's I'm that's late it. in the game. That's a, that's that's a lot about your hormones. It could be, you know, you <laughs> yeah. don't know. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, but yeah. anyway, it was very insidious, and it we really thought that. The way she talked, she was so positive. Everything's going to be so fabulous. Uh, I, I, and I um, think he, then I heard he was great with 
that. Yeah, I mean, and then remember that. Diana Highland. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. She died breast cancer. Yeah. He was 22. Yeah, and, and you know, I, a lot of people, because uh, I'm, you know, go, I don't talk about this a lot, but I, you, you the, the the spouse of that person going through it or the partner is, is a lot too, you know. Mm-hmm. and You bet it is. You probably noticed that with John. And what we was, didn't know that long. What time everybody knew it was fast. six months. Oh, geez, it was that It quick? wasn't a long yearly. I did not no, know that. no. We've been at this for almost four years. Yeah, no, that's a whole different thing. Ooh. This is a whole different, oh, man. different ball game. That's quick. And if it was going on, nobody knew about it. Sure. It was slowly, yeah. you know, coming oh, around. But wow. So that Those was are... a real button for him, yeah. breast, oh, yeah. you know, breast yeah. cancer. And then he lost his boy, Jet. Oh, I didn't so know he's that. had a lot of loss yeah. in his life. Yeah, yeah. You know. He's, he's staying hanging in there. He's got his big he's sister terrific. to look out for him. He, yeah. He, he's a very uh, <clears throat> self uh um, he he can fill his own tank. Self esteem. He's he he's got, he's got self, confidence. He's got, he knows. But yeah. he's also got a very good uh, sense of self and life grounded. and what he wants. Very grounded and loves his children. They're beautiful and they're wonderful. So yeah. yeah. Everything yeah, is. Yeah. We're all going to Ireland. Really? Yes, we're going to Ireland. Um, the brothers and you're sisters. Not going to, you're not going to Italy. We went. No, we, <laughs> no. Oh, we've been, but we actually this summer we were on a trip. Uh, we went to Paris, uh, Austria, Milan, and Ireland. Oh, I've been to Milan. And we yeah. traveled a lot. Yeah. And we were we had such a good time in Ireland. He said, "Why don't we come back for New that Year's?" That does sound great. So that's what we're doing. So two right days on. after Christmas, we'll go do that. So you're you're even going to be busier. I know, and then I'm done for a while. Well, good. Well, you can. We'll, we'll see. We'll what see. I, the phone well, will keep we'll, ringing. We'll, we'll Watch. take a break, but yeah. th- this is a little crazy now. Yeah, this that's a, really that's a is. Lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It my is daughter's going to go to study in Paris next. Year. Oh, nice. In the, in nice, the beautiful. There. So I'll be over there. What Maybe was she? We'll what will she study? She's uh, she's at the University of Washington. She's a her. It's a new major there, called Anthropology of Globalization. And it's how the world connects wow. business and marketing a lot. Wow. Which is, yeah. She's had a chance to, is a really fascinating kind of look at how things connect. And she's got, a, I mean, that girl's incredible. She's, uh, uh, and, you know, pretty fluent, getting pretty fluent in, in French. So she's, yeah. you know, I mean, big city girl. She's like, go, I'm like, wow, she's just going for it. She's going to do her. great. That's, that's how old is she? 20? 23. That's the, you know, it's the time, the right? The time of your life live. You got to do that stuff before you have babies and settle yeah, yeah, down. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. your choices get narrower because of your considerations. Right. You oh, know? Well, that's welcome to life. You know? Hey, um, your uh, last question. I, uh, it's your last Christmas show. Yeah. Can you explain to people what this is? Because it's super cool. Okay. The, and it's been a while you've been doing years. this. I've done it. I've been doing uh, at the resort for 12 uh, but the first Coeur two Resort. were the Coeur d'Alene Resort. Yeah. What did I say? The resort. No, oh, the Coeur d'Alene Resort. Uh, the first couple of years, the theater, Coeur d'Alene Theater, did a show there. And then circumstances changed. And I said to Jerry Jager, you know, I think I can put a show together. Let me yeah. try. Yeah. So I put a cabaret show together. It started as one thing. It was Mark Cotter, fabulous cabaret singer, and my husband, Jack, telling stories, singing. And the next year, I brought more people. We told stories about our families and what was when we were when we were kids, what we loved. And then after the th- fourth year, I said to my sister, "I said, you know, we we're running out of stories about us." <laughs> so I started um, this asking the community for letters, oh. and we put it. Uh, on, it was on television, radio, in the newspapers, right. and every year was a different theme. And the first thing, one of them was uh, your favorite toy that you got, didn't get, or gave. Oh, that's great. This year was Christmas Eve, your traditions, your food, your, I mean, so many letters, so hard to pick, and I have to pick eight. I picked nine. So that will be this year's. This year's. And so we have music. We have fun. Molly's very funny. She does her bits. Oh, yeah, Molly's funny. And we have letters, and we have music. And it's just a lovely evening of kind of a traditional Christmas. And it's the last one. It's the last one. I uh, well, how do you think feel it's about time. That? I, I, you know, you must be, you must be okay with it. It's your idea. It was my idea, and I saw. Uh, I got an email from the resort, and it was showing me sitting on a couch with a snowflake in my hand. Don't the the final curtain comes with the, that was the final curtain comes. Well, you down said to me because I understand this. I think you and I both understand this. Producing's a lot. 
Yeah, I do. So. And people don't understand that. No. And you're doing both. You're dry, yes. You're in it, and yeah. you're producing, and yeah. you're, you know, you've been doing this a long time, yeah. and that's a lot. Yeah. I think it would be good. I'll help them find something next year, because now, after this many years, um, uh, come, this... Come back and do a cameo or something. Oh, I could you know, have down the road. I could just, thing. No, that's and then I could just be one night instead of 15 shows. Yes. You know. That's exactly what you should 15 do. 15 shows is a lot. That's a lot. Um, I... St- when I called you, um, first of all, you remembered me, which was awesome. But I left you a voicemail, and Jack's voice oh. is still on yeah. your voice machine. And it's still, he's doing this crazy, I don't know, British it's voice. It's a British or accent about British Ellen accents, and Jack. You know, um, leaves, you know, leave a message. And I just, I went, oh. I know. Because he wonderful. was in the basket too. And I, I he and I, I had some cool moments with him just talking about He was a wonderful life man. A he, yeah, a little bit of a, you know, I sort of looked up to that guy. You know, he'd seen it all and he'd kind of come over and go, hey, you're an okay kid, you know. Like he yeah. just, just sort of that stabilizing, yeah. you know, pro. I mean, dude, he, yeah. he, he went through, uh, Lou Grant was big. Yeah. That was a big show yes, and he was. was a big deal. And he, he was. Saw, he was at the top of the, he's seen the top of the mountain. Yes, he has. So I just always, he was always great with me. And I was, uh, and anyway, I, you must miss him terribly. I do. I do. And, uh, I do. but I just thought that was so cool. He's still on your voice. And I, I cannot, I cannot get rid of it. It just, don't. just, no, I won't. There's no reason to. And people are taken aback. They'll say, that's the best message I ever heard. It is. And people who don't know who Jack is, you know, they have oh, to they don't even for know. something. They don't even, they'll say, that's the coolest thing I, oh, I just I heard, heard it. And I just went, oh, yeah. he's still here. He's still here. Yeah. You know, that's the power of these mediums, right? These yes. things we stick on it's tape true. and on it's true. disc and whatever yeah. these things are anymore. It, it was just hangs around, you know, and, so, well, you've you've hung around long enough. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for inviting me. I had a wonderful time. Well, good, and I'm I hope you liked the whiskey. I did. And, but uh, you know what? I know you're going. Have on. another. Oh, that's, oh, that's water. water. Water is <laughs> no, too much. Water is no good for you. <laughs> Just have have some scotch or no bourbon. Well, cheers. Cheers. Thank you very much for inviting me, Thank Frank you for Swoboda. Saying, yes, Ellen Travolta. MIP Podcast was filmed at the studio of Corner Booth Media. Please sure to like, subscribe, and follow us on social media. You can also listen to us on Spotify, Apple Music, and anywhere podcasts can be found. We'd love it if you'd rate, review, and subscribe to help our podcast grow. Be good to yourself. Stay interesting.